Hello guys, Arkand here, and this is Journal. Uh, this was recommended to me by Extragoon2884, shout out to you. So this is another toe dip. I will be reading uh, part of the prologue to at to some point. And if you guys want me to continue, just tell me so. Uh, it's part of my um, getting the feel of which VN I'm going to focus my energy more on. Okay, let's start. What's your name? Default Lucas. Mm, okay, let's go with Lucas just for now. Day 1, August 24. The sun, the sun shone through the clouded window, warming my numb face in this bleak morning. Along with it, there was a slight breeze that squeezed just strongly enough to make me realize that I've been looking at my empty cereal bowl for five minutes straight. Considering the amount of noise coming from outside, it didn't take a genius to realize I was already late. I'm not a morning guy, not because waking up is difficult, but because of the over overwhelming amount of chores I dramatically go over and over before I start the day. I sighed and decided to take the stick out of my ass before leaving the house. Today has to be a good day, after all. Mom, I'm leaving now. I'll be back in a couple of hours. Wait, Lucas, let me give you a good luck kiss for today. I really have to get going, Ma. Love you and see you later. Ooh. I, sub I subconsciously stretched my arms, the weight of my backpack helping the motion. Well, it's time to start the day. Now, in which direction was my new school? I looked at the map on my phone one last time to verify I'm following the path I obsessively memorized. I always get overstressed by the first day of class, so I wasn't too surprised to feel on edge until I knew everything about this school, from the location to its reputation. And well, I have to say I'm weirdly confident. I clutched my backpack, took a deep breath, and started jogging down my neighborhood. Today is the first day of my senior year in high school. Now, logic would dictate that I'm excited about this final year, being so close to college, independence, and all that stereotypical stuff. But if I'm being honest with myself, I would rather do anything than go to school in, this fir in the first week. The first week sucks. All we do are cringe introductions while the day progresses impossibly slowly. Also, since this is a different school, I don't have anyone to hang around with. So if it was agonizing before, this year it's going to be a treat. The thought of smelly teens and loud noises made me shiver subconsciously. And not to be a picky eater, but I saw some reviews online about how getting food poisoning wasn't that uncommon there. Ever since last year, I picked up the habit of running in the mornings. Though I would rather stay inside, sleeping, especially at the crack of dawn, I thought it would be a good routine to start. Before life got too hectic around two or three years ago, I was on the track team. It was something I truly loved with every fiber, fiber of my being, and decided to give it a chance again. Hence, I'm now trying to jog in the mornings, since doing it in the afternoon is a pain in the ass. It's also a really good way of preparing for class. It's a foolproof method to be completely awake for the first period. And so far, it's improved my mental a ton. I usually don't get up this early, but today is a special occasion. Since today is the first day, it means that whatever seat we choose will be the one we'll have for the rest of the school year. And I have to make sure that window seat is mine. After some walking, I passed through a house I now recognize pretty well. I saluted the kind old lady who was smiling brightly at me. On summer break, she used to watch me pass by in the mornings each day. I was severely creeped out and a bit concerned with this lady's passage of time. But one day, when I, when I was slipping by, she motioned me to get near her. 
I was pretty cautious at first. I thought she was she would be an evil grandma that was going to ask me to run more quietly or something. Instead, I met this extremely kind old lady who offered me a cup of tea and a good conversation. It was pretty weird. I thought she had me confused for someone else, but she just wanted to talk this with someone. She's a widow to an ex-marine who also used to run in the mornings, so she wanted to talk to me about it. She also told me that it took her a bit of time to summon the courage to ask for my attention, and that completely won me over. Even though I never met my grandparents, I had this weird idea about how old people were evil. But she is one of the sweetest persons I know, and even though we have a gigantic age gap, I would like to think of us as friends. Actually, I think she is my only friend, now that I think about it. Well, that's a bit depressing to think about. Regardless, the lady, whose name's Margaret, instantly recognized me and smiled wildly as I passed through the street. I told her today was my first day of school, last time we met, so that's probably why she is watching through the window on the other side of her house, where I don't think I've seen her. She is just so pure and nice. I should be just 10 minutes away now. Good. For some reason, mom decided to enroll me in this school before last year even ended. I heard it had some pretty nice extracurricular activities. They are known for having clubs about almost everything. I mean, I probably won't be joining any, but it does speak well for the school to be so inclined in non-academic stuff. Well, it could just be wrong in the end. Who knows? The only thing I hope is that this year goes as fast as possible. Oh, and also to blend in, I want to go as unnoticed as possible. Which I think which I think won't be a problem. Everyone already knows each other this far into high school, so the social groups are most likely closed. There are two parts of me, the one that wants to talk to everyone and have friends, the half that I am pridefully known for. Then the other part of me, who just wants to be the loner in the window seat. Had someone from the past seen me like this, would they believe it's me? Is this me? What the fuck, asshole? Do you drive with your eyes closed? The traffic light was on green, you stupid bitch. They continued to squabble until they were out of my ear range. I should pick up the pace if I want to secure the window spot. My light jog transformed into a stronger one. To anyone not familiar with athleticism, it would look like this is a full-on run. But this ain't my whole power. For a brief moment, I considered going as fast as I could, but disregarded the idea as fast as it came. If I were to run, I would probably be stinky when I arrive. I mean, I did bring a deodorant for emer emergencies, but it would be a bit gross to sit around with dried sweat for 8 hours. 8 hours? God have mercy. My mind was blank for the rest of the road, focusing on my breathing. St. Paul's Regional High School. <laughs> That's witty. So, this is my new school now. I muttered to myself, the enormous building in front of me standing proud in the chilly morning. I heard the groans of some students as they stood beside me, wishing to have another fate. I even, I even heard one of them say, fuck me bareback and call me Tiffany. Oh, wow. <laughs> Whatever the hell that means. I don't want to be here. I've always hated specifically the first day. I just end up making a mess of an introduction in the end. Funny how he uh, quickly shaped, uh, changed his mentality from I'm excited about the first day until and then right now he's oh, I'm so scared. And when you stare at the in disinterest of the students when you introduce yourself, you realize that you're just at the beginning of an extremely boring road called school where things really are rock bottom. At least you can only go up from there, theoretically. God, I can already imagine myself. Hello, my name is Lucas, and I like video games. <laughs> Mortifyingly enough, I practice my introduction beforehand so I don't end up making, making a fool out of myself. Who would have thought that the mirror can be a good ally? 
I felt really lame doing it, but it's better to embarrass myself when nobody else can see me instead of a room full of judgy, judgy teens. Also, nobody will ever know, so that's a plus. If I'm not misrem misremembering, this school is also known for having really good teachers, so maybe the classes won't be as agonizing. I'm not going to get my expectations high, though. After all, regardless of ratings and reviews, it's still a high school. <laughs> There's actually a high school that has, like, you know, ratings. You know, can you imagine? Yelp, oh, this school sucks. <laughs> I clutched my backpack and started walking towards the entrance. Luckily, I was walking in the same horde as some other random students, so to avoid, well, being me, I decided to focus on their conversation. There were three girls talking, all of whom had pretty questionable clothes for school, but hell, even I had to admit they looked good in them. But aren't they freezing? It's chilly outside, and they are practically naked. I'm so glad I don't have any reputation to maintain with appearances and stuff. That sounds like a pain in the ass. I continued to follow them deeper into the school, just watching them complain about stupid stuff. It was quite entertaining, actually. One of the girls looked back to the entrance of the school and saw me staring at them from two, from two feet behind, but instead of making a scene or something, she just smiled awkwardly and proceeded to ignore me. Thank you, kind stranger. So, I was say as I was saying, Gina Holland said Carolyn told Jay, I'll only have sex with you if you beat me at pool. And then she lost at pool. Deliberately. That is so awesome. Brooke! I, I meant slutty. Apparently, the one who had smiled at me was called Brooke, who got flustered from being yelled at. Sure you do, and you are still a size zero after summer break, let me guess. You bet I am. Instead of making a scene like I would expect from a popular high school girl, she patted her flat stomach and took the jo joke lightly. I decided to walk a little slower so they could get ahead of me. I should mind my own business. I was lucky that the girl from the middle didn't notice me. She sounds like someone who would have over-exaggerated and made a scene. And I don't really want to lose any more time. As I started walking into the high school into the school deeper and deeper, I realized that I was so focused on their conversation that I had tuned out all of the really loud sounds everyone else was making. The contrast from one moment to another was unexpected and it threw me a bit off guard. It wasn't unbearable but still a bit baffling. The school was packed with people from a variety of different races, the majority of which were canines or felines. Anyhow, every single social group were hanging out with their respective friends, being loud and talking about their interests far away from the rest of the students. The division was comically noticeable. From looking for less than a minute, I could see the nerds, the geeks, the emos, and what I would assume to be the jocks and or the popular kids. Huh, I wonder what social group I belonged to in my last school, since I don't really see myself fitting any label. I was never the most popular guy around, but everyone seemed to know who I was from a packed crowd. I was always nice with everyone, and could hold, and could hold good conversations with all of them, even making them enjoy my company in the process. But at the end of the day, I always stayed with the same two people. I don't have a single memory where I'm not hanging around them, even back to when I was a toddler. They were always there. They were always there, being the people I grew to love. But now that they are gone, I really need to start working on my social skills. I actually was really good with people before last year, but ever since that, that happened, I kind of just got isolated from everyone. And I think my social grace suffered the most out of the situation now. I just feel now I just feel awkward with new people and can't hold a conversation at all. I also feel feel more judgy than before. Though I was pretty miserable during that time, I can't lie and say I just suffered. It wasn't an easy situation, but some people have had it worse. And after it all ended, I think I ended up becoming a better friend, a better son, and a better brother. The twins can verify that last one. 
focus on the here and now, Lucas. New school year, right? New school year, right? I analyzed the crowded hall. It's still quite early. There are no classes for around an hour. So why are there so many people here? Well, I'm not going to ask, so I'll just assume people got lonely during summer vacation and were excited to see their friends again. As I walked deeper into, into the halls, the smell started to get stronger and stronger until I started to feel the stench of teen hormones combined with the moisture. The scent impregnated the air rather strongly now that I'm a bit far from the entrance. I looked around, and I analyzing the people near me, and realized that most of these guys had some sort of sports uniform. Oh, that's probably why there are so many people. They must have a sports team that practices before class. There was a time my brother had to wake up at 4.30am because of football practice at our last school. He hated it. He was never a morning person. Since today is the first day, there, there must be tryouts for a team or something like that. Well, regardless if they are from a sports team or not, people need to leave their excuses and shower. Out of respect for the other people, at least. With the end of my rant, I decided I had wan wandered around long enough and it was now time to get to my classroom. I reached out to the folded piece of paper that was resting in my pocket. After unfolding it, I found my information there, along with my schedule. Lucas Noir September 7, 20XX. <laughs> we don't know what year it is. Senior year. Class 4A. Locker 414. No clubs registered. Okay, so class 4A. I'm currently standing at the bottom floor, in the far end of the corridor to be specific. Where I'm pretty sure those guys are getting high at. I shouldn't have let mom change me from my old school. It wasn't the best, but people weren't getting high at the corner. Well, that's out of my hands, so I'll ignore it like the big boy I am. I peeked my head to the classroom in front of me, who had a professor taking his stuff out of his bag, probably preparing for the first day. I looked at the tag in front of the door, which said 1C. Heh, <laughs> that must be the classroom for the first years. I'm so glad I'm past that age. I was such a hormonal mess when I was 14. I was lucky my friends were worse than me, so people always focused on them for being rats and they forgot about and they forgot about little old me. The good times. Anyway, I'm guessing the first floor is for all of the first years. I quickly jogged to the adjacent room to check. 1D so if the first floor is for first years, then my classroom must be on the fourth floor, right? No time to waste, then. I started walking up the stairs as soon as I found them. As I went up, went up the steps, I saw less and less people hanging around the, in the halls of their respective floors. I guess only first years get excited for school? Or it could be that everyone's just hang hanging around at the entrance, which coincidentally is on the first floor. Yet again, I'm not gonna bother, bother to ask for such triviality. God, could you imagine if my classroom ha only had around 15 people? It would be nice to have a smaller class for, ch for a change. On the negative side, if there were less people, then blending in would be a bit harder. But not impossible. Well, as long as I get my window seat, then there can be either 3 or 50 people. It's just so nice to stare into, into the sky while listening to a lecture. It's a surprisingly good way of studying, too. I remember how my old teachers would get surprised when I got high notes on the exams and quizzes. I'm proud of being a fast learner. But what also helped was that I had to tutor my brother, who was kind of an idiot when it came to academics. Well, an idiot overall. He flicked me off so many times because of it. He was super annoyed to see that I did well and he didn't while and he didn't while putting the same amount of effort. He was street smart though. He was extremely perceptive with people, from body language to talking. That's probably why so many people feared him. I suppose it would be creepy to see a tall guy just staring at you, judgingly. His choice of clothing didn't make him the most approachable either. He always had his signature leather jacket and ripped jeans with him. 
He liked feeling like a bad boy, but he was really more like a huge loser trying to be cool. When I told him that, he yet again told me to fuck off. While laughing, of course. The fourth floor was has almost no one here. Nice. So now I just have to find my class. Oh. Just as I was as just as I was about to turn to my left, a strong body collided against me. We both fell to the ground, earning snickers and surprised looks by the five students hanging near the lockers, their lockers. I could feel my face getting hotter as a result. In front of me laying on the on the ground was the guy who also fell due to the impact. I stood up quickly, grimacing lit a little at the pain in my butt, but extended a hand to help him non nonetheless. Hey, are you okay? I think you fell even harder than I did. The canine looked at, looked at my hand with surprise, but smiled nevertheless as he took it with a strong grip. For a second, I thought you were going to tell an I think you fell for me joke. He maintained his bright smile. And I'm fine, by the way. A simple accident like this is not enough to take me down. He answered loudly, his voice so thunderous that I actually cowered a bit at it. Oh, I probably would have made the joke had it not been this early. I'm not exactly awake, if I'm being honest. I tried to mirror his smile, attempting to be friendly. Thankfully, he seemed to notice my attempt. I'm Lucas. A pleasure. Derek, likewise. Anyways, I'm sorry for bumming into you. I wasn't really looking. I saw him discreetly rubbing the side of his butt. <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's gonna take more than that to damage this guy. He pointed to himself with his thumb, showing me a big smile in the process. Are you sure? You are still rubbing your ass. He cocked an eyebrow in a playful manner. Oh, I just like touching my body. I'm just rubbing my butt as a coincidence. He winked at me while flexing. He was understandably proud of himself, having a lot of muscle in his upper body. He caught me staring at his arms, then purposely pressed them against his chest so they looked bigger. Here, check this out. He dropped down to the floor and started doing push-ups. <laughs> okay. Wow, that's very nice. You know, you bump into someone, talk a little. Okay, and then I'll show you I can do push-ups. <laughs> what a guy. You do have a lot of muscle. You must be a success with the ladies, then. Who the hell says that? <laughs> and also, who the hell does push-ups when they first meet? <laughs> you practiced conversation starters, Lucas. Improvising isn't your thing. Stick to the original plan. Well, um, it would be a waste to not use this body, you know? Shit, now he's gonna talk to me about his sex life. But I didn't get ripped because I wanted to get laid. I did it because I want to join another sports team this year, so I, want, I wasted no time in getting ahead of everyone. Oh, a sports team. That sounds cool. It is. Last year, I was on the football team. In my so sophomore year, I was on the dodgeball team. And freshman year, I was on the soccer team. I want to be the best at everything. I want all the univers universities in the world to see my talent. He posed like I've seen heroes do in comics after they've won a battle. I wish I had that self-confidence, just randomly telling the story of my life to a stranger. While he kept doing his poses, I couldn't help but stare at this peculiar canine. He was, as he was stated before, really buff. He was also on the taller side of the spectrum, having around 3 inches on me. And I'm not small, I'm around 5'9". His whole vibe and persona shouted jock, but he was more down to earth compared to what the stereotype suggests. His eagerness caught me a bit off guard, though. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, but it's kind of difficult to follow his pace. Or maybe I'm just too tired and feel like everything's going too fast. Yeah, that's probably it. I should've just put a la label on a guy after the first five minutes of meeting him. That's shallow. I cleared my throat to prepare my voice. This is my chance to socialize like a normal person again. Be normal, Lucas. I'm sure you'll get in. You sound determined and look more than fit enough to get in. 
I felt my smile tremble, probably looking fake. Thankfully, he didn't notice, seem to notice or care. I know, right? God, I'm so pumped up, man. Also, a scholarship wouldn't read. A sound that resembled a phone notification came out from his left pocket. Oh, sorry, just a sec. He took a minute to read that, then he peeled his eyes and slowly got away from me. Oh shit, sorry dude, I gotta get going, I forgot someone was waiting for me. Little bro is in his first year and is scared to leave the bathroom. He has volleyball tryouts, you see. He inflated his chest proudly. You got any brothers? Yeah, the twins are eight, a boy and a girl. Heh, <laughs> nice. Gotta run, see you later. He started jogging down the stairs. Wait, Derek, before you go, do you know where the classroom 4A is? It's on this floor, right? Oh, you are in the same class as me. And it's the very last classroom, in that way. He pointed to my right. Thank you. No problem, dude. See you later. He started jumping down the stairs two at a time as I started as I started walking toward my class. He seemed cool a bit too much for me. Mm, cool. Oh, we got a little hard. He seemed nice, just a tad bit energetic. And physical. I readjusted my backpack, which had loosened up thanks to Derek's shuffling, then started looking for my locker. The air on the hallway felt really nice. It was a bit stronger from the bottom floor, but not hard enough to be uncomfortable. 